how important was it for you guys to get that clean sheet against Fabian? Yeah, obviously the three goals was, was was huge, but I think the the clean sheet is a massive one because especially with the way they play, and it's going to be a difficult going down there. Um, but hopefully, uh, you know the way they need need goals, and also the way they just naturally play, it, we, we we will find a hole where we can maybe exploit that and. And we can find hopefully an away goal. And the fact that we will have kept our clean sheet at home will, would make that a massive, um, a massive achievement. What is the mentality right right now? You know, being at halftime of this series essentially, and having such a commanding. What's the messaging? What's the, what's the mentality? The messaging is focus on LA Galaxy. Um, you know, a big, big, big game coming up. So um, we've built a little bit of momentum off of that. And and why why not try to take that into league play against a good opponent, against a, a team that's. Uh, in our conference, um, you know, we, we need to at some point start get getting going in the league as well. So um, we're, we're excited for the opportunity that we have in Leon uh, next week, but we're, we're fully focused on LA Galaxy right now. For sure. And how do you evaluate overall the team's performances in early on this season, a few games in? Uh, decent. You know, I think I think the one where we struggled the most maybe it was was the uh, the Nashville at home. Um, I think. All credit to them. I think they actually played a really good game, um, and they're a good side. They've always been staunch defensively, and now they have guys who, who were able to to make things happen um, up top, and then they were able to take advantage of their one of their few chances. So that that was a difficult one. Other than that, you know, we, we go to Salt Lake. Um, we had to make a rotation a little bit with players, and, and uh, we're in that game. Really, we can we can take the lead lead there as well. We have a couple chances to tie it up. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's why. And so far, obviously, on on Kong and Calf, we, we we've done well. We've kept clean sheets. We've uh, we've been able to find a back of the net, uh, play really well defensively together as a unit. I really like that. You know, I think Freddie, for, all the way from the top down, last game we we really took pride in how, the way we defended. That came through, and so uh, no quarrels there. But um, we'd love to see some of that in the league now. You mentioned Salt Lake there. Take us into the locker room. Take us through that two-hour weather delay that happened. What exactly were you guys all doing? What was that like? How did that shift the game from a normal game to what happened? Well, it's, I mean, it's the same for both sides. So it's its not like we had to deal with it in a, in a more difficult way than they did. So, um, you know, you try to, to not be too stuck in one place for too long and put your hamstrings uh, in, in a seated position and, and then having to get going again. So. Uh, just, just stay. Uh, maybe mentally take take a break, but 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 not like unwind completely because you know you still have to play. So um, in the end, I think obviously the result wasn't what we wanted, but but sometimes you're fortunate if you're able to even finish those games because otherwise you you had to make that trip for nothing, and you still got to make that trip at at a later point down in the season. So uh, it's nice that the weather allowed us to go back out, even though the conditions were pretty crazy, but. Um, a, a learning experience too. Um, I think a really good one for someone like Obed, who maybe hadn't had, hasn't had to deal with something like that. So um, hopefully we can we can take that knowledge on board, and, and it'll help help us down the road. What have you seen from Obed Vargas, the 16-year-old? Uh, yeah, that he doesn't play like a 16-year-old <laughs> for one. Um, I like I like his confidence. Um, you know, that's that's usually in preseason. It's a different if it, it's a different beast when when you're when you're asking someone to. To show up in a pocket with a guy on his butt and uh, and pressing really high, and then you're sizzling a ball into his feet, and, and, and you know in preseason it's different because the pressure's off. But then, really, it, it was you know a testament to to actually how good he is when he was able to really just keep that going into the actual games. Um, so so that's been very very impressive. Uh, as I always say with young guys, the most important thing is how how do they handle. Um, a little bit of success, like how how, do, how does the, their attitude on the training field change? Do they keep going? Are they hungry? Do they feel like they still need to improve? And so far, he's shown all the right things when it comes to that. Washington, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Washington's lifting uh, indoor man, mandates. Um, how do you feel that the you know as far as the moving through COVID? Um, yeah, how do how do you kind of feel safety wise, or you know that look um, out there as far as yeah, it's going to be lifted. <laughs> Well, that look, um, it'll be nice to see people's faces. Speaking of an actual look and, and seeing emotions on people's faces and at times maybe you have to mask your disdain a little bit more when you're not too happy. Um, but, you know, it's been a difficult time for everybody and, and uh, I'm still a little bit, a little bit 
surprised that people are so upset we had to wear a mask. I don't think there's too many people that were like, sweet, I got to wear a mask today. You know, there, unless there's a couple of people that have a weird fetish. I don't think anybody was thrilled to put on a mask, right? Like, so you do it for the greater good. And um, honestly, I, I, I think I've, I've gotten used to it. And so, especially when, when I go into shops and stuff, um, market, supermarket, things like that, congested places, public transportation, I think it would be nice if people maybe just, just keep Keep being mindful of others. I'm not saying like where you keep your wearing a mask. I mean, you got to do what you got to do or what you think you need to do. Um, but just be mindful of others um, uh, and take care of uh, of your neighbors. I think showing empathy um, and caring for one another is not a bad trait. So let's let, let's see more of that. Yeah, lifting of that mandate calls on the uh, the time period in, Mar in 2020 when you guys shut down May 3rd, March 12th. So how do you kind of maybe look at that? I mean, do you recognize that date as significant anymore, um, you know, two years out from when you guys shut down? Oh, it's, I mean, it's been, it's been a crazy few years, you know. I, I, I remember, and this is just how ignorant we were back then, you know. I mean, getting shut down season, you know, getting put on hold. I think we were just about to leave for an away game, maybe Houston or something. Yeah. And the, the, the general consensus was that, all right, it'll be a one, two, one, one or two week kind of deal. Um, and boy, were we wrong with that one. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm lucky, you know, None, I, I didn't lose anybody during this pandemic. Uh, I didn't even get infected. Um, my, my family and I tried to take every precaution we could and we were very lucky to, to not have to deal with, with all that. But, um, I hope we learn something. You know, I, w I was kind of hoping that finding a common enemy would, would, would push humans together. Um, and what better way than a, than a pandemic that nobody should really uh, bond with, <laughs> um, but something that could push us together to find a solution and care for one another. But I think we've struggled with that a little bit. So uh, a little self-reflection um, for everybody. Um, would be nice so that we have things like that in the future that we maybe can make smart choices. Steph, uh, New York City FC refs, and you guys have a commanding lead in CONCACAF Champions League in the first leg. D does it feel to you like this might be the year for MLS to win, to win it, win that tournament? Yeah, I mean, it looks like some other teams from the MLS are, are in good positions as well. So who, who knows, this might be one where there's multiple teams from the MLS that are in the running. But for us, again, you know, Looking on paper, we know we had a good squad from the beginning. It's very difficult to get it going quickly. Um, I think we saw our best game so far against Leon in the first leg. Um, so we know we're capable of playing a, 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 against a good side and play a really good, a good, a good game of soccer. So um, it would be nice. There's bragging rights involved with the first one. You know, I always say that for me, uh, the first star to be to be part of the, the 2016 championship is, is massive because it's a historic one. It's not just a, a A star, it's a historic one. And so I think to to have an opportunity to be the first MLS team to win that would be massive. Um, and uh, an opportunity I don't take lightly. That's, you do have a big game against LA Galaxy coming up here at home. Uh, could you just give us your take on uh, that specific game? Good players. I think a good coach um, that tells his players exactly how he wants them to play. You know, has made some good additions, um, some dangerous players on that team. Uh, for me, uh, obviously, I think the focus will go on Chicharito, but um, for me, Vasquez is a very, very dangerous player. Someone who not only can, can finish himself, but also someone that actually provides for Chicharito a lot, right? Um, so that is one we'll have to keep an eye on. Um, good midfield, good goalkeeper. Uh, overall, a good side, you know. Um, I think a good possession-based team. So we, we may have to pick our spots where we, where, we, where we surrender possession a little bit. But we saw against Leon that, that we were okay with that. Uh, maybe get, getting into a more tight block, uh, good, good shape, defensively be solid. And then find the spaces when they're trying to maybe overload uh, somewhere. Find the spaces in behind and, and use our strengths with Jordan and players like that. So, but uh, a good squad. There's, 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 there's uh, obvious reasons why they're 2-0. and So um, it'll be a good test. Really been able to contain Javier Hernandez. Um, pretty much, I just mentioned the importance of keeping him away from the 18, inside the 18, where he's more comfortable. How important is that? 
Yeah, you know, I think his experience is, I would say, like, we need to eliminate, eliminate the service first and foremost because his runs are so good. You know, keeping him out at 18 is, you know, you can't foul him. So if he wants to run in at 18, he's going to run in at 18. And like I said, his movement is, is exceptional. You know, he's got tons of experience. He, he will fake going far. He floats in between the spaces. Um, and then once you bite to the far, then he goes to the near and then you're a step late. That, that's top, top notch quality, you know. So I, I, I don't think we can really, we'll try to make it as difficult as possible as we can on him. But I think the first step would be, uh, can we actually just not allow that service coming into the box, right? Um, they've, they've actually uh, started putting services in from a bit deeper even uh, because they know that he's so darn good at, at, at making those runs. So something we're aware of and we'll have to, we'll have to limit for sure.